let us wait for two minutes and then we'll start okay Okay, so good morning everybody. I hope everyone is joined by now. Any problems in mail? Any problems in mail reproductive system which we have covered till last lecture? Anyone, any issues in that? No, sir. I hope you are ready for the questions and uh, we'll just take a small topic and then we'll end the mail reproductive system. After that, we'll go on to the questions from the mail reproductive system. Okay, so if anyone has any doubts from whatever had been covered, you are free to ask. You can just think for a minute or two and then we'll begin. Sir, can yes, you express permission again? Just let me uh, share what I had wrote and then let me explain so you can have a better idea. Will that be fine or do you want me to explain this by myself as you wish? Okay. I can explain in both the ways. But as it will be better if uh, from the lecture notes as, as you had gone through that part.
let me share it. Okay, I hope you can see the screen. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. As you see, basically, permeation is the process through which the sperms are released from the seminiferous tubule. So once they are matured, okay, once the sperms have reached this state, once they are fully developed, okay, then they can be released. But the thing is, uh, during this stage, they are still embedded in the Sertoli cells. They are still embedded in the Sertoli cells, as you can see. Now, uh, in order to get released, the entire process of the mature sperms to get released, that is what we call, call as a spermiation. We can also refer to sperm as spermatozoa, as they are flagella, as they are moving. We can refer to them as mature sperms. So then I have just uh, given the pathway. Okay, this pathway has nothing to what to do with this as such this process, but as this is a question, and just to remind I put that. If you remember, it will go into the reta testis, then into vasa afferentia, then into epididymis, and then finally into vasa differentia, and then into, into the, it will open into the ejaculate reduct, okay, as you know. This is the same mature sperm image which I had drawn and just explained to you. Okay, to put use different colors so that you can get an idea what is acrosome, the head part is formed by Golgi body, nucleus shrinks, and it reaches over here, over here, we have mitochondria and centriole over here, okay. So, Okay, so this is what spermiation is, nothing else, it's just a release, okay? This is what we refer as spermiation. And all of these things happens under the effect of the hormones, which we have talked about, about FSH, LH, and testosterone mainly. Okay, so now if you have any specific doubts, you can ask, okay, otherwise spermiation is only this few couple of sentences, nothing more than that. As you can see over here. Only this is in this permeation. If you have any specific questions, please ask. Otherwise, this is what it is. Anyone, any questions? Did your concern got addressed? I don't know who would ask it out. Yes or no? Madam, I'm waiting for a reply. I think she is sleeping. No, sir. What was your concern? Is it they know so what was your concern? You want anything any specific question? No, sir. Okay, so now just we'll take one small topic and then we'll take the questions. Okay. Just a moment, guys. I'm getting a call. Just a moment. Excuse me for not this meeting. It's from your school only.
you can uh, see the screen. So we are just covering a small topic and then we'll go on to the questions. Okay. So it is nothing but about the composition of this form. Okay. It is nothing but about the composition of the form and the cells which we talked about. Okay. So mainly the male ejaculatory fluid is what we termed as the semen. Okay, the male ejaculatory fluid is what we termed as is what we termed as semen. Okay. So it is mainly the fluid which contains forms. So it is it is a white viscous fluid. It is collection of secretion of a minor vesicle. Okay, then prostate gland, then bulbourethral gland or cowper gland, okay. and it also contains sponges, and it also contains sponges. Okay, so these three accessory glands and the sponges that will form the semen. Okay. Human male in single ejaculation, that is once in, in single if the semen is released, okay, then it is the number of sperms are 200 to, it contains 200 to 3 million sperms. Nowadays, this number is declining. So in, in vitro fertilization, IVF has been on the rise because the fertility of the male is decreasing owing to lifestyle, alcohol, smoking, too much telephone and mobile phone use, okay? Not telephone, mobile phone use and all cell phone use. It is all hamper sperm production, okay? uh, unhealthy lifestyle, okay? So that's why if you see this, it has been said that out of every 10 babies born, okay, three or four are born out of the IVF, minimum 50% of two is 40 to 50% from IVF in Andaba. Semen pH is 7.3 to 7.5. Semen pH is, it is basic pH, remember that. Okay. And in this semen, 60% forms. So, normal movement, while remaining 40% goes vigorous movement. And we all are over here because of this vigorous movement pumps which shows vigorous movement because this big this pumps can only fertilize the egg cell this vigorous movement once the pumps which show this movement they are they are, they fertilize the egg cell so where the where is okay unfortunately but my god where it went Anyways, I don't know if you're deleted somehow. Yes, anyways. So, I'll again write. So, there are. I did again, not an issue. 60% of forms. 
will show normal mode while remaining 40% So vigorous mode. The remaining forty percent will show vigorous mode, and, and we all are here because this this forms will any of this one of this form will fertilize the egg cell. So out of total sperms, only this can form the zygote. So we all are here because of this sperms which show vigorous moment. Okay, otherwise we would not have been born. Otherwise we would not have been born. So this is what we have in the sperm semen part. So any issues in this? So they should know semen is basically a collection of this three. Single ejaculation has this much pumps, the pH is this much. All this can be asked as a question. As you can see over here, this also can be asked as a question. So now if you have any doubts, if you have any scientific questions, okay, you can you are free to ask. Okay, I don't mind answering and this is like because we are highly ignorant in the matters of reproductive health and the scientific knowledge about the reproductive system and that is what leads to so many problems and health issues okay so we indians lack scientific attitude and i hope uh, learning all the sciences may inculcate it if you if you, if you see the situation right now the vast the mass devastation of the covid okay one of the main reasons for that is scientific ignorance okay or lack of scientific attitude a lot of people died owing to believing in quackery and a lot of other things and they didn't go to the doctor and they didn't get done what what was supposed to be done and you know, that's why a lot of people died so it is basically a failure of teacher okay so that's why uh, if you and you know in india we have one of the highest uh, cases of, of the reproductive health issues okay all which we'll study in next lecture also next lecture, chapter also about the studies and all so it, it is it is very much needed to have your generation and your age group to have appropriate scientific correct knowledge of this and as a biology teacher it becomes my duty to impart it so if you have any questions about it then uh, you are free to ask about the male reproductive system any questions okay there is no need to feel uh, shy or uh, maybe uh, reserved. You can ask okay, because it's all scientific thing and we need to learn it because it is needed for our life also. As such. And I always say in all of my lectures, okay, wherever I teach, whenever I teach this topic. So, so now we'll go through the PPT. Okay. And meanwhile, if you have any problems, you are free to ask. So this is where we end the male reproductive system along with the gametogenesis. Then we'll start with the female reproductive system and then we'll go to the female gametogenesis. Okay, my sequence will be slightly different from what is the textbook.
I think we'll discuss this, so we will move on to the next slide. That is male gamete process. So we'll be talking about the gametogenesis. Okay, just this is for your idea, just to see the images and all. Okay, this was actually one of for my one of my online applications. Uh, till now we have done for ten, that is I study twelve. Uh, now we also be future we'll be doing about eleven, twelve also. Okay, male is spermatogenesis, female is oogenesis, as you can see. as you can see over here this is what we're talking puberty this will start okay matrices will start and then there will be primary spermatocytes secondary all those which were discussed the same textbook diagram the male part if you have any problems please ask this is how the flagella this tail is made. so through, through, through this it can move the movement is by this flagella okay so they contain 46 chromosomes as you can see this is where the okay they undergo myosis periodically over here you can see this this forms being developed semi tribu section is there okay so from that there will be primary spermatocyte will be formed as you have discussed okay and then primary will complete first matrix division will form Secondary spermatocytes, as you can see over here, this is one, okay, this one, which has 23 chromosomes, then it will undergo second meiotic, so as you can see over here, this is how we have this, mass is one secondary, mass is two, we'll have four, these are, these are basically what we call as spermatids, these are what we call as spermatid, got it? Okay, as you can see, these are what we call as spermatid. So this is what I have explained by drawing. Okay, the process of spermiogenesis or the formation of this form which we discussed. Okay, or the formation of this form which we discussed. Okay, I hope you remember the whatever changes which happens which I had explained to you. Okay, so this is mainly in, in comes relation to the changes which happens in this form. So it is the nucleus as you can see over here the Golgi will form macrosome. Okay, this nucleus will shrink. It will go to this end as you can see. Then over here, the cytoplasm is lost, centrioles, as you can see, are getting errant, and this flagella will develop, as you see. Okay, then mitochondria will move in this part, and then finally, this kind of sperm is formed, this type of sperm is formed, as you can see. Okay, so this is what we call as the spermatids are transformed into spermatozoa by process for spermiogenesis. Okay, or that is what we call as, now what we call the DSD. Spermatogenesis, okay, that is the term which we call after textbook, also called as spermiogenesis. Okay, also called as spermiogenesis. Yes, as the second stage is formation of sperm or spermiogenesis, is what we refer as you can see over here. This is the second phase of the spermatogenesis. Got it, guys? You can see the changes over here. It has been mentioned. So from this shape, it is transformed into this shape. So what will happen? This sperm head will become embedded in the Sertoli cells. So they'll get obtained nutrition from the Sertoli cells. Okay. So it will start at the puberty when there is GnRH is high. Because as you know, sexual hormones will kick in at certain age. Same about the female also will learn in menstrual cycle and all. Okay. The menstrual cycle will only begin at puberty because of the sexual hormones. And then it will lead to release of LH and FSH as I had explained to you in the chart. LH axon, that is cell androgens, can stimulate spermatogenesis, that is testosterone mainly. FSH on the Sertoli, the chart is better. Anagartha chart is better to understand, which we had done in the age, in which I had explained to you. 
What will be the answer, guys? Anyone? Puberty. Over here. Single spermatogonia. How many sperms are produced? And what will be their ploidy? Ploidy means whether they are haploid or diploid. Anyone? Foreign haploid. Obviously. Now structure of a mapchio spermatozoon or what we call as the sperm. So this is the egg cell and the sperm is going inside it to fertilize it as you can see. This is the acrosome part. This is the center part. Okay, mitochondria and centriol is in this part and this is flagella tail. Okay. This is egg cell. This is entire egg cell. So you can see over here the image also. This is sperm structure. So it is the term is zoon from the animal the seed. And I, this is the image which you see. The head, the middle piece, and this is mitochondrial spiral. Okay. This is neck part over here. Centriol is there. Over here, centriol is there. This is nucleus acrosome part formed by Golgi body tail. The meeting ends uh, join on the same ID and password as you know. It will be always the same. Got it, guys? Okay. So, plasma membrane envelopes entire body. Okay, see. This, en this entire part you see it is plasma membrane, transparent structure. Okay, this entire covering part, plasma membrane will be the covering complete sperm till this end okay, remember that we cover till the complete sperm till the end as you can see as you can see over here this transparent structure so this mitochondrial spiral centrioles as you can see see this gf you see what will happen? Okay, the this for your standing. So the head has this elongated nucleus. You see, okay, this this structure, and then it will go inside the fertilized egg cell. It's covered by a cap-like structure, which we call as the acrosome. Look at this part, embedded in the Sertoli cells. You can see this is mitochondria, this is nucleus, this is acrosome, centriol is there. Then this tail is there, as you can see the tail over here. Acrosome has numerous enzymes like protease, phosphorus, phosphorus. This will be important hyaluronidase. To enter inside the egg, it needs all these enzymes. Okay, this is what they are trying to show. To enter inside the egg, it will need all of these things. Okay, this is where the egg will encounter egg and how it will enter. Which I'll explain in the fertilization. Okay. Middle piece is mitochondria, which produces so many uh, energy. I mean, this energy to for the movement. Without this, sperm cannot move. So they need okay energy to for movement. Okay, this is what I explained during sexual intercourse or okay during uh, any other way. Okay, mode of or maybe masturbation. The human male can ejaculate 200 to 300 million sperms during coitus. 60 percent of sperms may have normal shape and size. Okay, but 40 percent of them show vigorous motility and normal fertility. So they are transported by accessory ducts, as I explained already. Secretions of epididyme is vast difference, seminal vesicle, prostate are needed for maturation and motility. Without this, sperms cannot move and fertilize. Okay. So, as you can see over here, the number of sperms are there. Okay. Seminal plasma, the semen, what I have discussed. 
is maintained by testicular hormones as androgens. This will study, it will be of the acrosome, it will come in fertilization. Okay, so this is what we have in the gametogenesis. Any problems, guys, in this? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, so now let us take questions. Let us take questions. Just wait for a while. Let me just open the file. So I'll ask one by one and everyone has to unmute and answer it. Hold on a moment, guys. I put the videos on the website, uh, on the YouTube channel, so kindly go through it. I'm only putting it for you, okay? So kindly make use of it. I'm not interested in publicizing it, okay? Not at all. Okay, so it is only for you, for your reference. So make use of that, okay? Because I don't even time sometimes to put it, okay? Uh, so somehow I managed to do it. So it is only for you. It is not to garner views and all because I'm least interested in that. Okay, so we have covered we have covered male reproductive system and we'll take questions from that. Okay, so this one the first one. Okay, we'll start with Kalpesh. So also better Kalpesh answer. What will be the answer? The first one. Kalpesh, are you here, beta? Are you here? Okay. Ruchi, what will be the answer over here? The one I had highlighted, what will be the answer over here? The shared terminal duct of reproductive and urinary system in human male is? Anyone? Sir, Uretra. 
Are you sure? Yes, sir. Okay. So the shared terminal duct is obviously it will be urethra. It's a very easy question which we have. Just a moment. Meeting is going to end, guys. So please join on the same ID. Okay, we'll take second question uh, and we'll meet again. Okay, as it is going to end, so I won't be able to take. So let's meet and take the questions in the second half of the lecture. So we join on the same ID and password. So we're done with the first part. Now we move to second.